We pray. <laughs> <laughs> what a concept. <laughs> we pray. You know, we, we know that things will happen. We know because the darkness can't do anything against light. Yeah. So when we go, we know that. I will tell you one story. Yeah. One story. Francisca Lopez is the, the name of the place. That, that place is really remote. People had never seen car in their lives, far away. And there are two backgrounds in Brazil. Some people are native Brazilian Indians before the colonization from Portugal in 500. Mm -hmm. Some others that Portugal brought from their colonies in Africa during, when they are planting sugar cane and coffee in Brazil. They brought all that voodoo and that type of mm -hmm. cults you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And they never liked the slavery. When they were able to run away, they went to places where Portuguese would never find them, went to islands, became fishermen. So you don't find one or two spiritists. The village is a spiritist center, and the leader of the village is the warlock. That's what we found there. They somehow, after some visits, they called the leader uh, Zoel, his name, called our missionary apart and said, you are different. Everyone comes here to receive. You came to give. So I have a request for you. We have only illiterate people here. Would you teach us how to read and write? He said, yes, I would do that. And we, were, we had a very good book for that, full of letters and words. <laughs> Called the Bible. We use that. But where to bring? Uh, because everyone showed up from 6 to 60. So where in a little fishing village can you assemble? You can put these people together. The only place big enough was the Spiritist Center. <laughs> the church was born there and Mr. Zoyle got saved. Now that's a bit of an irony, is it not? That uh, the church born in the Spiritist Center. Uh, would, would, would there be those opposed to the, uh, the light of the gospel? Because Mr. Always, always. Mm. The first thing we, we face is opposition and rejection, that sort of thing. And you have to go through that time. Um, in a, when we start to share in the gospel, there is a, a clash between the local culture and the culture of the kingdom. And we try, because we are not from the villages, we are city people, we try not to be that close because we can bother with our own culture. With, um, so what we do during those days, we preach and we leave. We prefer not living in the place. Mm. What happens is that they start talking about us. Some people think we are deceivers, we are evil. Some others think we are godly and they talk and talk and talk. During the time they are clashing and talking, some of them get saved because you are there preaching and go back. This is the power of gospel, it has nothing with us, zero. <laughs> so when, when you have a number of people on, a, on, a, on an island who have uh, come to faith, how do, you, uh, how do you sustain that faith and how do you uh, cultivate their faith? Uh, do you send in young couples as pastors? Yeah, with, so people have different gifts. So at first we send pioneers. They can't be for a long time there because they grow and destroy everything, right. so, <laughs> like me. Right. So, what, so they go, they start, and a lot of people come and get saved, and so they go to other places and pastors come. So usually this second group of people, they live in the spot, in the village. Usually a main village, for example, if this table was an uh, area, mm. we would plant one church here, another one here, another one over there, and each one, each one of these churches would plant 10 around. Mm. So we would reach like 35 communities with three churches only. Huh. So this is the strategy. Tell me about the, uh, the social impact of the gospel. I'm sure that some of these islands, uh, their culture is not only quite primitive, but uh, they would have maybe a, a real lack of infrastructure, uh, clean water, hygiene, all of that kind of stuff. You come into one of these areas, uh, there's a, a widespread acceptance of the gospel. Is it reflected in the way they govern themselves and the way they treat one another and the way they run their villages? Yes and no. Yes, because you know, when, when you are a sinner and, and when you are in darkness, you are not seeking what you're supposed to, you pay the price. Right. But no, 
because they are so isolated, they don't have the goods they need. Right. So someone has a boat and bring the goods and they have to pay double price. Mm. And someone has the ice, they don't have electricity, how to keep the, the, the fish, the catch. So someone comes with a big boat and ice and they set the price. Right. And usually they pay, for example, for a heart, heart of palm, they play, pay <laughs> 165 times less are you with me? The 165 price times? Less. Really? Uh, so, for example, um, the, the guy cuts the heart of palm and sells, sells for five cents. Right. And I buy in the supermarket close to my home for eight reais, 165 times more. Wow. Fish is the same. They are exploited. So they are always in trouble because they never make enough money to, to buy things because they pay so little and this is a cycle. You know, it sounds to me like they might be a candidate for what's happened in the coffee industry. You know, there's fair trade coffee out there. There's more, there's a movement globally about making sure that coffee growers are getting a fair price for their coffee and mm -hmm. not being exploited. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody needs to try something with uh, some of your island uh, communities. We do. Oh, you're doing it already? Yeah, we Well, do. there you go. So you're an enemy. <laughs> you're an enemy. Now, our, our, our time's almost gone. You, you, you live in the city, uh, you obviously make it to North America, your English is excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, how does this uh, ministry impact you personally? <laughs> you know, you're, you, you've got a foot in a very primitive world, you've got a foot in a very modern world, uh, you, you've got a foot in the north and the south. Uh, how does this impact you and your development as a person? I love and I respect them. Yeah. They are very good. Yeah. They are great professionals, they are great people, but they are lost. Yeah. So, it's just a privilege for me to be there. So I think I, they help me to be a better person, a better Christian, because in order to reach them, better to be a godly guy, otherwise nothing is going to happen. <laughs> so sometimes I seek the Lord for them. It's awful to say in front of the cameras, but uh, most of the time I, I, I seek the Lord for His glory, but sometimes for them. It's a mix in my heart. I don't know, but I love them, brother. Yeah. I just love them. And what do you do when you want to have fun? If you just want to kick back and relax and enjoy yourself. What, yeah, what when do? we are living in a boat, my wife and I yeah. lived for almost four years in a boat, yeah. preaching in 62 communities. Yeah. We had fun where they had fun. Right. Playing soccer, going out. My, all the discipleship was fishing because they were there. I was right. there. Uh, so I was not drinking, but all the rest we were doing together. <laughs> right. And you managed to have three children along the way. Yes. One of them was born in, during those days. She's a dentist now and uh, gives part of her time uh, to help fishermen uh, fixing teeth in the name of Jesus. But now there are so many uh, projects, uh, 1,300 volunteers per year. Uh, hundreds of, of medical doctors, dentists, projects. It's, it's, now it's, it's nice. <laughs> now you remember when there was nothing and now there's all oh, of yeah. this. Uh, you must have a great heart of gratitude to the Lord for His faithfulness. Yeah, I do, brother. I uh, really do. He's faithful. By the way, I hear you're uh, not a bad uh, biker. <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> I hear you could have been a world-class cyclist, maybe in the Tour de France. Uh, maybe, if I could. <laughs> if I could. If I could keep going. You can still ride a bike? Yes, I still, I still do. Ride well for well, a 50 year old guy. You know, 50 years old, I'm, oh, I'm, oh dear. Anyway, what a, what a terrific uh, opportunity to hear from you and uh, God bless you in your work. Oh, it's you. very exciting and uh, from one pioneer to another, I love it. Yeah. I, I, I hope that I can somehow keep informed in the future yeah. and have you back again on this program. Yeah, let's do it or you go there. I want to come there. Yeah. I want to come there sometime with a camera. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right.